In this video, I'm going to be fishing that wire you see hanging down from the TV, um, going to the power cord uh, through the wall. Uh, many of you have been doing this for Thanksgiving, Christmas, Black Friday, all the TVs being bought. Some people want to do it, think it's more difficult than it is. Sometimes it is more difficult than what you think. Um, so I'm going to basically go over how I'm going to fish this wire down the wall, what I'm going to do to it. I'm actually going to do something a little bit out of the normal. I'm going to flip that plug that's down to the left on the inside of that other wall, which happens to be a closet. And I'm going to feed the wire from this side of the room to the other side of the room. Now the reason I'm going to do that is because there is a craft room of my wife's on the other side that we made. And she's got her cricket on the other side of that wall. There's no power on the other side of that wall, so I'm going to actually kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to keep my office wall clean uh, by not having a cord on it. Not going to have a cord coming out the bottom plugged into it. And I'm also going to get her power for her cricket. Now when you're getting ready to do this, you've got to think of um, what's in the wall. So always look on the other side of the room, make sure there's no gas lines, plumbing lines. If it's an exterior wall, you're going to have insulation in the wall. Uh, some houses, the interior walls are insulated. So um, I was here when they built this house, so I know what's behind the wall. But if you don't know what's behind your wall, that can cause you some major issues. So basically what we're going to do is I'm going to take this wire, I'm going to feed it from here instead of going straight down the wall because I don't have a power cord here anyhow. So let's say this is your situation. You've got a plug directly under the TV. All you need to do is drop it down, come out and plug it into the wall. Now you can also take the power, fish the power up to the top um, that you technically should be a licensed electrician or at least know what you're doing uh, because you can cause you know, fire hazards, electrocute yourself, uh, other major problems. Now the next thing to take in consideration, which I did here, is to go on Amazon and get a longer power cord. Most power cords are six feet long, and it seems like it's only six feet from the TV down to the bottom, but if you think about by the time you go across the TV, through the wall, down the wall, out of the wall, back over and into your plug, usually you lose a couple feet that you don't even think about. I'd recommend 10, 12 foot wire for going down a wall and over to a plug. So this is basically what I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need a low voltage box for behind the TV, low voltage box for the other side of the wall. Again, I'm gonna add a plug to the other side of the wall for the printer and for the TV. Here's my longer cord I got from Amazon. We need a little piece of 12 gauge wire, an impact, something to cut your wall with. Um, you can use a razor knife if you want. You can use a jab saw, uh, oscillator, uh, a tape measure, uh, some wire nuts if you're going to do the electrical part, and a couple screwdrivers, and something to poke through the wall with if you're actually going to the other side of the wall. Another tool that comes in handy is a magnetic stud finder. Um, this just has two neodymium magnets in the wall, and basically what it does is it sticks to the nails or the screws in the sheetrock. This is accurate probably 99.9% .9 of the time. I have ran into situations where the sheetrock got and missed the stud in the wall and basically ran all the screws straight through the sheetrock and didn't hit the stud all the way up the wall. So double check by a couple of different things and I'll show you when I do this. First thing I wanna do is I wanna figure out where my plug is because I'm going on the other side of the wall. I need to know whether to go on this side of the plug or this side. There's a stud either here or here. So we gotta figure out which side it's on. Take my magnetic stud finder and there it is. So my stud is on the right side of the box. Now if you don't have a box nearby, what you would do is find the next box that's closest to it, which is right there. And if your house is built correctly or up to code, every stud should be 16 inches on center, 24 on interior walls in some situations. For the most part, 16 inches on center. So I can verify my stud is on the outside of this edge, the outside of this edge. So if I wanted to find the next stud over, I would start at this point because I know the stud's right here. Go 16 inches that way, I would know I've got a stud there, and so on, all the way across the wall. So if you can see through the wall, basically I'm going to have a box here, a box here, and a box here. And again, I've already looked on the other side of the wall, there's nothing there but a flat wall. So I'm going to unplug the TV, take the TV off the wall. If you need help with these, make sure you get it. And if you're going to leave your TV upright like I did, put something at the bottom of it so the bottom doesn't slide out and it doesn't fall on the floor on you. Now the way my wall is, my TV center is right about here. I had to move the mount that way just so I could hit studs on both sides of it. So I've got a mount where my TV is narrow so I can slide the TV this way. So I know I've got about 8 inches of hangover right here. So I'm basically going to keep it right on the inside of this. I'm going to come down a few inches below the TV, that way I don't hit the back of the mount. Now in your particular situation, if your 
Again, receptacles directly underneath of here. You won't need to leave the extra space I'm going to. But since basically on the back of my TV, this would be the mount. When I hang my TV, my mount's gonna slide all the way over here. The bottom part of my mount is hitting right about here. So if I put the receptacle in the wrong spot, I'm gonna be hitting the mount. So I need to come in this way a little bit. We're actually on the outside here, so I'm closer to my box down below. So I'm gonna go on the outside. That way I make sure I don't hit the mount base. When the mount sits back up against the wall, I don't want to hit the plug. When doing this, you don't have to actually put a box in the wall if you don't want to. Uh, for low voltage especially, I prefer to put a box in the wall just because it's a cleaner look. Plus I do this for a living so I get used to having to make a finished look on it. So I'm going to put the box in the wall um, just to make it look better. Again, it's behind the TV, depending on how far your TV sticks or if you've got an oscillating mount that pulls out, you're definitely going to want one. I'm going to take this box and I'm going to put it where I want. I'm flipping it inside out because you don't want to trace the outside of the box because the box will fall through the wall. I'm going to trace the inside of my box out. So I know that's the minimum size hole. So I'm going to put a little bit bigger than that. So I'm going to go on the outside of my line so I can cut out around the outside edge of that box there. And I may uh, skip a couple uh, minor steps here, so uh, please don't bash me. But if you want to take a level and straighten this out, you can actually level this line out if you wanted to. So it depends on how much time you want to take to do this job. But you can actually make a nice straight line with a level if you wanted to. Me, I've cut in enough of these, I can kind of eyeball it. And if you don't do it every day, uh, it may be a little bit more difficult. So as you can see, there's my pencil box. It's kind of hard to see on the gray, but... And then again, use whatever tool you feel more comfortable with, razor knife, oscillating tool, uh, jab saw, whatever you want to cut that hole out. tabs up on my workbox and there's part one done if you were just doing the straight down all you have to do is drop down cut another hole below drop the wire through it plug in your tv and you're done uh, me i'm gonna take this power cord off or power outlet out i'm gonna punch a hole through the other side and i'm gonna put a receptacle in while we're at it now what i want to do is i want to get a quick measurement here on the inside of this casing to my outlet. Again, I'm not going exact, but I'm about 64 inches over. Again, I'm going to be on the right side in there, the left side in here of that receptacle down below. So I just got to have a ballpark about where I'm going to get. Again, I've already checked, but I'm going to double check just to make sure I don't hit anything on the other side. So again, this is the other side of the wall. Again, her cricket's right there. There's no power to the cricket right now, so just pull it out every time she wants to use it. So I'm going to kill the double birds. Uh, so we'll pull this out and I'll be right back with you. Just to sidetrack a little bit, I did that frame TV um, the other day also. Uh, it hangs phenomenally, uh, almost perfectly flat with the, t with the wall. Um, but I'll show you how I'm going to fish that wire down the wall. That uses the Samsung One Connect, which is like a box they use. So there's only one wire coming down to the back of the TV. All right, back to the project at hand. Now this was a kid's closet for years and years. Um, so um, when we fixed it back up, since she was shoving it all and hiding it all, I didn't do a lot of time fixing the drywall. So. Please don't kill me on the dents in the wall because this has had hole after hole after hole after it. So I've got my tape measure down here. 64 inches is where we are on the inside. So we should be somewhere right around here. And I can see where the old shelving used to be. Because again, I didn't really fix that because we were planning on reshelving all the way across. Things changed. So if I'm not mistaken, my hole is going to come out right about here somewhere. So my next step is finding where the power is going to be on the other side. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this plate off the wall. Now the power is still hot in here. I would suggest killing your power uh, if you're going to get anywhere near the receptacles. Um, I don't plan on sticking my fingers in there yet, so I'm not going to turn it off yet. 
Give your plate stuck to the paint a little bit. Take the end of your screwdriver. And bump it. If it's a nylon plate, it'll come off. If it's hard plastic, you might crack it. But there's our plate off. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this drill bit. I'm going to put it beside the electrical box. Not in the box, but beside the box. So I'm about right in the middle of my box here. And I'm just going to take it by hand and turn it. I'm out the other side. And again, do not go inside your box. The hot wire is on this side, but it doesn't matter. Don't try it anyhow. So basically I've stuck that right through the wall. And that's why we want to check the other side of the wall and make sure there's nothing in there before you do that. Our power outlet is going to be right here. So our plug's actually going to come through the wall somewhere right in here. This is going to come out right here. And just real quick, what we're going to do in there is a high voltage work box versus a low voltage work box. It's being enclosed back since there's electrical connections on the back. We need a receptacle, an outlet cover, a little piece of wire, a pair of wire strippers I've got around here somewhere, and maybe some wire nuts. We're back in our closet. Now, when I was on the other side, the electrical box is right here. The stud is over this way. When I pushed the drill bit through, I came through at an angle. So I know that I'm coming away from the box. So what I did is I measured my other outlet. It's 16 inches to the top. So I'm going to mark this one 16 inches to the top just so I stay consistent. And again, there's nothing else on this wall. It's in a closet. I'm not trying to match anything. So you don't have to be super precise. But Now, what you want to do with the electrical box is you want to be able to cut all the way to here. You don't want to cut above your ears because your ears are what holds it in the wall and keeps it from pushing through. So this little guy here, 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 and here are the only thing keeping you from falling through the wall. So you don't want to cut past those. So I'm going to flip it backwards and I'm going to draw around the outside of this one instead of the inside. And the reason I'm doing that is just because it fits a little differently than the low voltage box. So I'm going to mark my pencil lines. Again, don't cut past the ears. So that line right there, even though this side came down further with my pencil, that was the ear. So I'm going to take my box and actually just draw a straight line. Again, if you have to, make these smaller and you can always notch them out later. I can see our boxes right here on the other side. There's no power going in the top on the bottom of it. So I got wires going on the top, so I'm gonna push my wire up through this bottom hole from this side when I go to the other side now. And off. Alright, so we're back in our room. Now some people assume that since the lights are off, the power is off in the receptacles. Um, don't ever trust that. Because you don't know who wired the house, or if you do know who wired the house, maybe you do trust them. I still don't trust them. So what you want to do is, you, if you've got a wiggy, you know, a wiggy is a little thing you stick in there and you touch both sides. Uh, you get a plug tester. You can get a little toner that you stick in the side and it basically beeps until you get the power off. Um, but I just double check my receptacle to make sure it wasn't hot because I'm going to be playing with it. But again, don't assume that it's not hot just because everything else is off in the room. This is also a good time to change the receptacle out if you um, haven't changed it. Um, they're 57 cents if you buy a regular one. These newer ones, this one has two USBs. Um, the one with the USB and the USB-C is about 35 bucks. I just changed this one not too long ago, so uh, I'm not too worried about it. I've got one on the other side of the room with the USB-C. So basically I'm gonna pull this out. And if you're not an electrician, don't try this. If you don't know what you're doing, don't try it. Call an electrician, have them do this for you. Because in this case, I've already got two wires coming in. I got one coming in, one going out. So basically, I'm gonna add a third wire to this. So I'm gonna have to nut together my blacks, whites, and coppers and make a different ground. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my wires off. My neutrals. 
my ground or my hot and take out my ground. Okay. I'll get these out of the way for now. If they're tied up in the box, on time, so each one goes the right direction. Just makes it easier when you go back in the box, plus when you push back in your ground, last thing you want to do is push the ground up against the hot terminal, because you'll be blowing stuff up or tripping breakers. All right, now I know for a fact my box is right here on the other side. So I'm gonna take this tab in the back of this electrical box, I'm just gonna knock it down and push my wire through that way. Get the light on here. It's kind of a two-hand job, so I'm gonna try to do a little kind of one. These little plastic tabs here are made to push from the other direction, not from this direction. So as you can see, all I did was pop that tab up. And again, it's normally made for the wire pushing from the back, not this way, so I just pried it out. Take my wire. And I know I've got plenty. I'm just going to kind of make a little hook out of it. So when I put it down in there, that way, turn it, it'll pull out the other side easier. So I'm just going to go on the other side and pull it out through that hole. Okay, so my other side, I, I verified I've got enough wire coming out. I'm going to stuff a little bit more in there just because. I'm just going to measure this one to about where the other one is. I'm going to cut it off. Another thing also is to make sure you're using the correct gauge wire if you're doing this. Um, if they ran a 14 in your house, run a 14. If they ran a 12, run a 12. So make sure you're using the right wire. Don't mix and match your wires. I'll sheet this off. Shove back my extra because I just want the wires coming through, not the yellow jacketing. Sometimes the paper tears. Now what I was saying is, since we've already got a wire coming in and a wire going out to the next receptacle over, we're having to add one here. So basically I'm going to strip these off a little bit. I'm going to put our whites together, our blacks together, and our coppers together. Now some people will use um, wire nuts, some people use the quick, lock, quick locks or the quick stabs. I prefer these. Um, these basically, you don't want your wire pushing through the other side, so I've got that one a little bit too long, so I'm going to trim a little bit. And what you do with this guy, is you take it, you push it past the connection on the inside, and you're done. So I'm going to do black, and again, I'm going to try not to twist these all together when I'm going through with it. So that's one. And one of those is my hot coming in. You may have to re-strip those or bend them a little bit so they're straight because if they were nuts or underneath tabs, it may not be perfect to you. Another thing, if you're not an electrician on this, again, this can kill you. This can cause a fire. This could be very dangerous, so don't do it if you're not comfortable with it. I'm not recommending anyone do this that doesn't know what they're doing. Another thing to do is check with your local code. If you're not an electrician, or check with a local electrician. Make sure these are code in your area. Some places do not approve these quick stab connectors. I'm in the Carolinas, they approve them here. So basically what I did is I hooked my hots up from my hot coming from the power box, going down to my new receptacle, going over to my next one. I'm going to do the same thing on the neutrals. Now I've got a four conductor blade here because we still need one wire coming off for our old receptacle. easier also if you're not trying to stay out of the light and stay out of the camera angle. I'm kind of making this look a little more difficult than it is because I can't really get my hands in front of the camera to do what I want.
Again, I'm just verifying that it went all the way through on each one of these. So here's my neutral. Again, untie your wire so they're not getting all wrapped up together. Usually I try to keep my neutrals and my grounds on the same side of the box. That way I'm not arcing anything out when I push them back in. I'll take these guys and cut them evenly. Curve on the end of it. And then our other copper was already twisted together with a uh, compression fitting right there. So I need a piece of scrap wire for our new outlet, or for all the outlet, I'm sorry. So it's hard to see in the dark, but I've got a black, white, and copper. I'm just going to leave these a little bit longer than what they need to be for now. I'll cut them off once I get the receptacle in place. I'll shove my copper in. Again, verify all of them went through. I'll fold it out so when I fold that back in, this will be sticking out. So with our white or our neutral. And don't overstrip them. All of them are in. Same thing, pull him back. And our last ones are hot. If you haven't used these connectors before, you'll actually feel the wires up in there. If you don't, like, you know, you saw me on a couple of those other ones, I actually grabbed the pliers, like on this one. So I just can't get a good grip, and again, I'm kind of in the way of the camera. If you got a pair of line ones, it's better than a pair of uh, wire strippers. And once you get it started in there, it'll slide the rest of the way in by itself. You just don't want to skin the jacket off of your wire when you're doing that, especially when you're hot. So let's get these back in the box the way they were. And again, make sure your copper is the farthest away from the hot. So my hot's going to be on this side. So I'm going to take my copper, push it under, over and out of that way. I'm leaving my one lead out and shove them all the way to the back so you can get your receptacle in there. Same thing with the neutral. Back and in. Again, if you're an electrician, you have a pair of line ones here, you just take your line ones and they just shove them back in there. And then our hot goes to the furthest to the right. electricians out there are cringing right now. So I'm going to cut this a little bit more. Cut that even. And then we'll put our stuff in the back. So I got hot, white, and ground. So hot. Might have a strip the ends of them off.
so I thought it was kind of a pain because it's got the little tab, so I had to flip it over so I could get it to stay open. And I'm just running those in with my impact. I'm not super tightening them. I'm going to finish tightening them with a screwdriver. And you want to make sure these don't pop out. You don't want a bad ground or a bad neutral. Um, you don't want a bad hot because you can cause a fire that way. So we're all tight. Line my receptacle up here. Again, I'm making sure the copper is as far away from the hot as possible. I'll shove it all the way in flat. That way, when I tighten it down, it doesn't turn sideways and our plate doesn't stick off the wall. bit and yes I have a white cover on the black receptacle uh, code right now I can't find anything in stock anywhere so I just haven't gone out of my way to order one so we just painted the walls gray they had black covers on them before and sooner or later I'll get around to put a white receptacle in there whenever I want to spend 40 bucks on a receptacle again If you want to be all fancy schmancy, make sure your screws turn up and down. And as soon as I find my other one in the pile of dirt I got here, we'll be all set. on the other side so there's plenty of wire sticking out over here i'm going to test up my box before i do anything so i'm just going to shove that in the wall where i can grab it and my box fits in there perfectly so to make my life easier i like to put these in and wire them before i tighten them down um you don't have to if you don't want to but it just makes it easier these tabs on these work boxes are a pain in the butt I'm just going to take my screwdriver and pop it out here. And the tab's still in there, so I'll grab the wire, keeps it from pulling through the other way. Push my wire through the box. So, collect more than what I need. Same things in there, we're gonna skin it off. So this time we don't have to make all the extra connections. So the junction's in the other room. So I need a whole lot of extra wire. thing to consider when you're doing this if you don't know what your code is you can only put so many pieces of wire in these boxes depending on how deep the box is so if you've already got two pieces of wire in there usually three will work um, once you start adding four or five pieces of wire in there um, usually you're probably not you're, you're not you're exceeding your code so back to where you might want to get an electrician involved uh, these receptacles only take 14 gauge in the back so i'm actually going to coil these over your screws going when you're tightening this you want the screw to bite in and pull it that way so just out of habit whichever way your wires curved should be going away the screw just going to tighten that up the screw's going to bite it same thing i'm just going to run it in and tighten the top one too it just sticks out further and you're less likely to touch it if you ever take the cover off for some reason the little tab in between the two uh, if you ever wanted to know uh, if you've got a switch receptacle somewhere, you can actually have one of these hot all the time and one of these working off with a switch. 
if you break that little tab out, you can run two different wires to it. You could even run two different rooms to it. And again, that's why you want to double check and make sure you got no power. Because if you've got a wire on the top and bottom, someone could actually have this one hot and this one not. Wouldn't be very smart, but it can be done. And if you're not breaking the tab out, it doesn't matter whether that's on the top or the bottom screw, as long as it's on one screw. Again, just run it down. Screwdriver and tighten them off. And the ground. And the ground one never wants to fit into these solids, losing them up a little bit further than what they need to be. Try not to pop it out of there because they're pain about to get started again. But if you raise it up right to the point where it's ready to fall out, usually your ground wire will hook under there. Like that. Okay, so we're all hot. And you want to make like a little S fold behind us, so you want to kind of fold them. Down, up, and back in. So you're making like a little spring out of it. Again, make sure your copper is nowhere near your hot. If you've got arc fault breakers in your house, you want to make sure the copper is not where the neutral is because if you touch the neutral with the copper, it'll trip the breaker also. I'll feed my wire back in there a little bit more. And push the receptor to work, it's flat. Again, you could put that in the wall first if you wanted to, but you don't have to. It's easier for me to just take the whole thing together, fold them in, and then pop my ears out. And don't over tighten those because you don't want to break the sheet rock. And you also don't want to pull a corner out. You start getting the corners out, and then you'll end up with a crooked receptacle. panel, breaker back on, stayed on, go check the power on the outlets we just put in. Well, that's a good sign we got a light. Uh, take my tester and we're wired correctly. Go to the other side and same thing, wired correctly. Okay, so our plates are on, our outlets are hot. So what we're going to do is now we're going to cut our low voltage box in. Somewhere right in this area here, we're about nine inches to the left of this box. So basically I'm gonna find my stud again, which is right here. So here's my stud, here's my box. We wanna be just on the inside of the stud this way. So we wanna go at least an inch and a half over. The stud's an inch and a half wide, and we don't know if they hit the middle of the stud, the outside edge. So if we go right where that den is there, we should be good to go. And again, we're gonna measure 16 inches up. That's where the top of the other one was, and we'll verify it on this one. So 16 inches to the top of where the hole would be. So 16 inches. Again, I'm gonna take my low voltage box. I'll put it at the top of the line there. I'm gonna come down just a hair because that's where I know my line is.
Again, don't go outside your ears because it'll fall out. Inside the ears, inside the ear. So like before I've taken my box, put it up there, I've traced it out. I'm gonna stay inside my ears so my ears actually catch a bubble on the sheetrock. there for the future. Test my box. Yeah, perfect fit. Now before I tighten this box up, I'm going to drop my cord in from the other side. The reason I drop my cord in first, that gives me a little bit more room to get my hand in there if I need to reach across and grab it. It's not a long fish, so we don't need a fish tape. We're just going to drop it down the wall, reach it, and pull it through. And I drop my wire to the other side. Make sure you don't pull it all the way out. If there's two of you there, it should be a whole lot easier than one person, but... Again, this is kind of a one-man job for as small as this is. And make sure, of course, you fish the end with the plug-in on it and not the end that goes in the TV. Not that I've ever done that before, but just in case I had. I'm going to slide my box over the wire. And when you tighten these ears up, make sure you don't pinch your wire in there, of course. So I'll pop that in. Make sure my wire's out of the way of my ear. Again, don't over tighten it, just want to snug it up. You over tighten it, again, these corners will pop out. When the corners pop out, your plate doesn't sit flush. I take my feed through plate. Now, you can use a brush style plate, you can use whatever you want. I prefer these. I don't know what they're actually called. I always call them shanty caps because they look like a dryer shanty, except for they're inverted. Some of them actually come out of the wall. This one actually fits in the wall. I like it better. It gives you a cleaner look. Plus, if you're behind a TV or something, it doesn't stick out of the wall and hit the TV. Pop the screws in. Okay. Okay, and a quarter reach plug, which I do. I'll come back and clean all this mess up in a minute. Back on my TV side, as you can see, I got plenty of wire hanging down there. Pop this cover on. Same time, I'll just slide it over the wire. And turn this up or down, whichever you prefer. And that gives you extra room. You can also shove your wire in the wall so that you have extra. You can put the extra in the wall. cable. I stream everything. I uh, use a fire stick so I don't really need any power going down the wall for anything else. If you're using a fire TV or something with USB, you may want to put power up here. Um, if you've got a newer TV, a lot of people don't realize that on the back of the TV there's a USB port and you can actually power your fire stick off of that USB port on your TV. So the next thing I want to do is throw my TV back up there. I'm not going to plug it in yet. If you've got two people with you, this is great because both of you can lift it up, plug it in at the same time. Me, I'm by myself, so I'm going to have to lift it up there, fold it forward and plug it in, but I'm used to it. Um, one other thing with the mount, if you notice, I've got a single bar mount here. Most of the mounts you see have two bars on them. If you can find these single bar mounts, Santos makes one, there's a couple other brands that make them. Even the one from Amazon that has all the nail holes in it actually still has bolt holes in it. I would never recommend hanging a TV on 42 nails or whatever they come with. It's kind of ridiculous to me. I guess we're just hoping you hit at least one stud across there. But personally, I try to find a stud everywhere. But if you use a single bar mount, like in this case, if this plate was already here, most electricians mount their boxes at five feet. Five feet seems to be right in the middle of where your TV goes every single time. This little bar here will let you raise it just above them, just below the uh, receptacles. And it's a whole lot easier to get more play out of your TV with this mount. That's what I was saying about the fire stick earlier. Uh, this TV has two USB ports, and basically I just power, powered the fire stick off of that. Now, when you first turn on the fire stick, sometimes it'll come up and actually tell you uh, wrong adapter, not enough power, 
uh, but if it boots up and comes on the first time it won't ask you that again so i was just hit go ahead power it up with what's in there and if it plays it plays if not then you'll have to use your adapter but most likely it will power off of that usb port and with the single bar mount the good part about the single bar mount is if you're doing this by yourself when you lift this up you'll feel it hit so basically you'll, you'll you kind of eyeball it um, again if you do it enough you just kind of get the feel for it you'll feel this hit the mount then all you have to do is go up another inch or two and then when you let it back down it'll drop into place every time so again got my tv don't ever put your belly in front of it i'm gonna raise that till i feel it hit the mount hit the mount out get up about an inch check just to make sure again it's not the prettiest way to do it but if you're by yourself that's the only way to do it so the last thing i'm going to do is pull my power cord over well not the last thing but the last thing i want to do pull my power cord over i'll pull this out without pulling it off the wall i still don't have the support in there yet to keep it from falling off the wall so if i lift up it's going to fall off the wall so we don't want to do that pull my whole cord Plug in my new cord. I'm not going to think about it. I've got one with a 90 degree angle on it. That probably would hit the mountain wall case. And I'm just tucking that behind the mount. This mount has a couple little wheels on it. So I don't want to smash the wire. I don't want it falling out of there either. So I put it behind the mount. I'm going to take my excess and just shove it back up in the shanty cap. I'm going to take my fire stick wire and we'll do the same thing with it. And just fold it back on itself. And go right up in the hole. Back my TV is nice and clean looking too. Slide it over where it needs to be. Keep getting looking behind it to make sure it don't hit anything. That's back over where it was. I've got clearance for my side. This little guy here on this particular mount goes to this little panel right here. Basically, just goes under it to keep from uh, being able to knock the TV off the wall. In case somebody does lift up on it, clean it or something, you don't knock it right out of there. And back on my cricket side, there's my power cord. Slug it in. Take my excess, tuck it up the wall. There's a shaky camera holding it instead of using the mount. And again, if I need, I might have to put a power cord here just to get that to lay flatter. Uh, I think her cart's just going to push behind it, it won't bother anything. And we're back on our TV side. Power button. Pull it up on the side, just cleaning up a big mess. Putting the cart back in, we're good to go. Uh, hope everyone enjoyed the video. Hope that helps. If you have questions, let me know. Again, that's kind of a video on how to add power and do the uh, line. If you got this one, you just want to do your HDMI's or whatever, and you don't want to do power, um, check out my other videos. I'll try to put them on the same category. I'm going to do one. I'm going to take the same video and just chop it down into a couple little pieces and just do how to fish the HDMI through the wall. Again, probably tomorrow, next day at the latest, I'll be showing you how to do that um, frame from Samsung. It fits snug against the wall, so there's no room for error. I don't know how you would pre-wire for it, but I'll show you how to get that wired on the wall also. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Please click on the like and subscribe button.